In this video, the FCC Tario joint venture presents a summary of its proposal for the construction of the mixed breakwater at the Port of Asu in São João de Barra, providing the project with all the skill and experience gained in the execution of works of similar characteristics. FCC is the parent company of one of Europe's largest and most profitable groups in the fields of public services, environment, infrastructure and renewable energy. With over a hundred years experience of building roads, railway lines, ports, waterworks and buildings, FCC is a benchmark in the history of construction. It is present in more than 50 countries on four continents, where it invests in technology, improving processes and developing eco-efficient communities. Thus, in 2011, international markets accounted for 52% of FCC's billings. All this is possible thanks to a workforce that exceeds 90,000 employees and to the implementation of management, sustainability and quality systems that assure the best possible service. At FCC, as professionals, we strive to overcome the latest technological challenges and to generate the well-being of future society, making our commitment to build a better world for all a reality. Description of the project the Mixed Breakwater Project is of considerable technological interest. It includes the construction of a vertical seawall approximately 2,000 meters long, three mooring platforms and a 600 meter long rubble mound breakwater, requiring the building of 49 concrete caissons. The rubble mound breakwater will be built of a core of 1 to 500 kilogram rock fill, crowned at a plus 5.5 meter level onto which a 1.7 meter thick filtering layer will be laid using 0.5 to 2 ton rock fill. Finally, on the seaside, a protective layer will be laid composed of 3.9 cubic meter blocks of core lock concrete crowned at the plus 9.6 meter level and on the inner side, a mantle of 2 to 4 ton rock fill. The vertical seawall will be built with 40 reinforced concrete caissons, lightened with rectangular cells 24 meters wide and 37.3 to 58.2 meters long, resting at the minus 15 and minus 26 meter levels, depending on the section. The foundation bed will be built with 10 to 100 kilogram rock fill, protected from wave action on the seaside by 2 to 3 ton rock fill and on the inner side with 500 kg to 1 ton rock fill. The shoulder will be formed of a section of reinforced concrete crowned at the plus 10 meter level. Both the width and the height of the foundation trench will be adapted to the geotechnical profile with the dredging level varying from minus 25 to minus 35 meters. In the shelter of the vertical seawall, the three mooring platforms will be built. 132 meters long and 25 meters wide, each with three caissons. The caissons for the platform at the back of the dock, for Suez Max type vessels, will rest at the minus 21 meter level, while those for the other two platforms, for VLCC type vessels, will rest at the minus 26 meter level. The key to the execution of this complex project hinges on the building of the new vertical seawall, which calls for a high degree of technological know-how and stringent control of the proposed procedures. The joint venture has over 20 years experience of working with this type of technology, having built over 10 kilometers of seawalls of similar characteristics using its own resources all around the world as well as undertaking other works under other joint venture arrangements. Given its extensive experience, the geographical site for the project and the previously established time frames for the execution, contractual frameworks, the joint venture considers as critical elements in the construction process the manufacture and subsequent sinking of the 49 concrete caissons necessary which will be largely dependent on the conditions at sea at the time. 
For this reason, we have opted to assign to the project two floating docks owned by the joint venture, the Mar de la Neto and the Mar de la Nol, which have sufficient capacity to build all the designed caissons by the scheduled deadlines. The Mar de la Nol is the larger of the two, with dimensions at the base of 60 by 40 meters, equivalent to half a football field, and a height, not counting the towers, of 26.3 meters. Its manufacturing performance rates are 8 days for the 18 meter deep caisson and 10 days for the 29 meter one. The Mar de la Neto, with dimensions of 51.6 by 32 meters at the base and 28.2 meters high, obtains performance rates of 7 days for the 18 meter deep caisson, 8.5 days for the 24 meter caisson, and 10 days for the 29 meter one. In view of the maritime climate, we have considered the period between October and April as the optimal time window for the work at sea, particularly the sinking of the caissons. This will allow considerable leeway in terms of meeting deadlines to assure the successful completion of the works. Nevertheless, as a standard practice at FCC, a wave monitoring and prediction system will be implemented at the site to obtain on-the-spot information about the behavior of the marine environment when it comes to undertaking the more sensitive activities. Building Approach In order to meet the commissioning needs, the works have been scheduled in four phases. Phase 1 It is planned to manufacture a total of nine caissons initially in Spain, at the port of Algeciras, Cadiz province, which will be transported to Brazil, to an auxiliary port, initially Angra dos Reis Bay in Rio de Janeiro state, using a semi-submersible vessel that will carry up to four caissons per trip. The caissons will then be towed to the port of Asu and sunk to form a U-shaped temporary seawall to house the floating docks and so continue with the caisson manufacture. The manufacture of these first nine caissons will commence in January 2013. In coordination with these tasks and following bathymetric studies of the area, works will begin at the Port of Asu in December 2012 to prepare the foundation bed for the concrete caissons, consisting of dredging, tipping rock fill and subsequently leveling the area necessary for the first sinking operations. This is the moment when the construction of the first 438 meters of the rubble mound breakwater will also begin. A first stage has been planned during which the core will be tipped at sea up to the minus five meter level, followed by a second stage when the remaining core, protective mantles and core lock blocks will be laid using land-based means with the crowning being completed when the withdrawal tasks are carried out. The monthly aggregate needs for the building of the bed and also for the protective mantles, concrete, etc., will be covered by the stockpile volumes currently available at the port of Asu and the quarry. The shortfall of material will be covered by the Itaoka quarry operation, 70 kilometers away from the work site where the extraction rate will be coordinated in accordance with the needs on site. The transport of the first caissons from Spain to Brazil will take place in February 2013. They will be unloaded in a deep sheltered area at an auxiliary port, initially at Angra dos Reis Bay. The first caissons will be taken to the port of Asu and sunk immediately after the arrival of the first semi-submersible vessel in early March 2013, attempting to reduce to the minimum the time needed for provisional stockpiling while making optimal use of the most favorable windows for the sinking tasks. Once case in number 9 has been built in Spain, the preparatory work to move the floating docks to Angra dos Reis will begin, first mobilizing the Mar de la Neto and later the Mar de Lenol. Once positioned, the required official approvals for the floating docks will be obtained, 
coinciding with the completion of the preparatory work at the Sioux of the planned U-shaped sheltered area. The sinking of the caissons during this first stage will be followed by a set of maritime actions designed to assure the structure's stability. As soon as possible, the backfilling of cells will begin and the joints between caissons will be sealed, preparing the surface for other actions and the outer and inner protective mantles will also be laid. A set of auxiliary operations on the level will take place at this point to build the superstructure of the seawall, building the concrete slab and the provisional L-shaped wall. This will act as a shoulder to provide sufficient shelter while the auxiliary installations are operational, as well as for the floating docks themselves. Once the wall has been built and the necessary permits have been obtained, Phase 2 can begin. Phase 2 Phase 2 consists of building the two alignments of the C-shaped vertical seawall, composed of 11 caissons, and the first mooring line, 132 meters long, with three caissons, as well as the superstructure for the wall that will shelter the floating docks in their second position for the building of the remaining caissons. The manufacture of the caissons will begin when the most favorable maritime season begins allowing us to make optimal use of the sinking windows to assure constant sequential growth of the new seawall with practically no downtime. As soon as the shoulder works allow, the floating docks will be moved to their new sheltered position. Phase 3 Phase 3 of the works will begin once the floating docks have been relocated to their second position, resuming the caisson manufacture process. As the first location will now be free, work will be able to continue to build the rubble mound breakwater, with completion scheduled for April 2014, in accordance with the stipulated conditions. During this stage, it is planned to build the vertical wall alignment as far as 300 meters from its northern end by building 14 caissons and repositioning the two caissons that were provisionally sunk during stage one to provide shelter for the floating docks. Meanwhile, the sinking, backfilling, laying of protective mantles and subsequent superstructure works will continue, building the edge girder and protective shoulder. The three caissons for the second mooring platform will also be laid during this phase. Phase 4 Finally, Phase 4 will consist of building the final 300 meters of the seawall and completing the two remaining mooring platforms with a total of 10 caissons plus the linking slab with the existing seawall. These tasks will be completed by the 31st of March 2015, after which the provisional pier will be demobilized and the worksite restored, with final completion scheduled for the 30th of July 2015. The joint venture can offer its extensive experience in undertaking similar works and assure that the works are completed successfully, assigning a human team with considerable experience and allocating all the technical resources necessary to execute the works in accordance with the proposed schedule, such that they are compatible with ongoing operations at the Port of Asu. The technical and financial bid submitted includes all the relevant forecasts and conditioning factors to assure that the works are carried out in strict compliance with the guidelines set out in the terms and conditions of tender.